Hey everybody, I wanted to do a quick video recapping the important stuff from yesterday's seminar. We went through a lot of information over the course of an hour and 15 minutes, lots of good questions, and um, I'm, I'm gonna try to condense everything into a few minutes. I wanted to first tell a story that I think is extremely relevant for everybody because sometimes it's not obvious to see how interconnected topics are, but I think this will. What could, for example, um, a topic like stomach acid, digestion, the gallbladder, the liver, and their health have anything to do with body fat, losing weight, and things of this nature? Well, I'm going to show you. So I have a client whose um, wife is getting ready to run a marathon. He said, I'm a little concerned that her diet isn't optimal. She's, she seems to be eating this and that, and that doesn't seem to be the greatest choices, blah, blah, blah. I don't really know how bad her diet is, but it was his concern. Um, and he was concerned that she wasn't losing the weight that she, that she wanted to lose. And uh, I said, well, is she, losing, is she running the marathon to lose weight or in order to run a particular time in the marathon? He says, no, she's running to lose weight. Now, I want you to scroll down in the newsletter after the video and look at um, sort of the rant I put on about long distance running. It's something that I did in middle school and high school at a high level. Um, I, I've run 5Ks, which is 3.1 miles in the low 16 minute marks. Um, that's pretty fast, everybody. Uh, very, very capable, very good runner, and it took a lot of training and time to be able to do that. But even at that level, my physique was nowhere near what it is today. And if you look at an elite marathon runner compared to an elite sprinter, the sprinter's physique looks a very particular way compared to the marathon runners, and it's, and it's for a reason. Now, again, we're talking about elite athletes here. So meaning it doesn't get better. If, if we're going to find the physique that matches the action, it's going to be at the elite level. Therefore, let's understand this very quickly. A again, it is in the UTC manuals. It's explained in fair detail there that high intensity interval training is going to spike hormones that are desirable for uh, gaining muscle and preserving um, that, that quality muscle growth hormone, testosterone, IGF-1. Um, so in context, these hormones are very good to upregulate when we train, and that's what builds that good quality muscle. Second, what is the most thermogenic thing on a human body? It's muscle. It is the hardest thing to maintain. The body maintain, spends a lot of energy uh, preserving muscle, and therefore, it is the thing that upregulates your met metabolism the most. So those are two very good reasons to be doing things like strength training and sprinting in order to build and preserve muscle tissue. On the other end, if we do things like long distance running, what are we doing? We're, we're literally training the body to hold on to body fat because if you're investing um, literally three to four hours a day, right, to run a marathon, that's what it takes, right? You have to build up. Uh, to, to run 26.2 miles, you know, it's, it, you're not running three or four miles a day. You have to build up to these 15, 16, 17, 18 mile runs, which will take most people three, four hours to complete. So just think about the investment in time here. We're talking um, during the last couple months, you're talking about literally 15 to 18 hour commitments of running during a week. I'm asking people to do essentially three one hour commitments at the gym, which includes a warm up and includes your hit training and includes your strength training all within an hour, just three hours. That's it in order to have the physique you want. But when you run long distances, you're literally you're saying to the body, hey, listen, we need to preserve energy. Well, what is one of the two main functions of body fat? It's to preserve energy. You're literally telling the body, Hey, well, listen, we're going to be running for the next four hours. You're going to need as much energy as possible. Make sure you hold on to body fat. I mean, that makes sense, right? The other half of it we've talked about before, but I'm going to go into even more detail here because it, it, it's going to show how this related to the topics we've been talking about building up to stomach acid, digestion, and all these things. 
you've heard me make the argument that a body will not let go of fat if it's storing a lot of toxins. That is the other major role of body fat. Body fat holds toxins. And the reason why things like visceral fat is so deleterious to the body, or um, you'll, you've heard of fatty liver, because when fat gets marbled into organs, the concern here is the fact that the toxins are no longer away from the organs. So body fat is purposely stored away from organs because fat tends to, be, to, tends to store toxins. Now, ideally, the liver will get rid of most of your toxins, and it does this by breaking down fat-soluble toxins and making them into water-soluble and then passing them through the kidneys and through bile, and that bile helps break down um, the foods that you eat and you, and you poop things out. Th this is how it should work. But I went through a long list of everything that's toxic in, in our environment and in our foods and everything else that we consume and we eat. Just take my word for it that the things that we're eating, the things that we're doing adds a lot to the toxicity of our body, the things we breathe in, the things we're eating, the things we're drinking. When we put this extra load on the, on the liver, it puts extra load on the gallbladder and the pancreas. It puts extra load on the duodenum, which is part of your small intestine. It puts extra load on the stomach. And we talked about how stomach acid gets low and all the problems with digestion down the line. So again, this is another reason why your body will not let go of body fat. And it has to do with the fact that you are, most people, I should say, are eating shitty diets and the, the body's holding on to this, this, these toxins as, a, as an evolutionary advantage. The body wants to survive. It doesn't care about how you want to perform. It, it will do everything to survive. It does not care that you want a six pack. It doesn't want to care. It doesn't care how fast you want to run. So again, the body will not let go of fat if your body is highly toxic. It it is concerned with survival. So when you combine these two things, right? You if you're training your body in such a way that it's holding on to body fat, and you're eating a a diet that um, maps onto high toxicity, you've created a perfect storm for holding on to body fat and therefore bad body composition. So you're not going to see a 400 pound marathon runner, but what you will never see is a lean, cut, strong, muscle dense marathon runner. Um, even at the elite level, again, when you compare apples to apples, put the 100 meter sprinter next to the marathon runner uh, at the Olympic level, and the quality of the physiques are totally, totally different, and it has everything to do with hormones. So hopefully that gave you guys a little bit of an insight into fat loss and how the body works in terms of uh, toxins and how, how and why training a particular way matters. And, um, you know, there was a lot of other info we went into about fat-soluble vitamins and how to treat low stomach acid and what's going on with pancreatic enzymes and all that kind of stuff. But um, that's enough for today. And uh, hopefully in the future, we can do other live seminars where people attend and ask great questions and we continue to improve ourselves. Have a great day, everybody.